Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Chatham Community Park amid a small traveling city. And actually this small city is the Kelly Miller Circus, which is in Chatham for one day only. In fact, one day only is pretty much the way this circus operates. They'll perform two performances this afternoon and tonight and then bang, it's on to the next city. So you can imagine what a logistical opportunity this is for people to try to keep this small city moving. And with us is Jim Royal, the general manager of the circus. And Jim, um, we're on a platform. I think this is the platform where, where you give elephant rides from, but we're going to get a chance to overlook this. But when I say a small city, it really is, isn't it? It is indeed, yes. A city of about 72 people here on, on the lot today. And, and it's a city and a family because the 72 people travel almost all year together, don't they? We're on the road from about 32 to 34 weeks each year, from March till the middle or end of October. Wow. So 72 people. How many vehicles do in this in this convoy that goes all over the Midwest? All told, it's 32, including uh -huh. big semis down to a small advance vehicle. Yeah. We're going to meet the advance man later on in the program. He's going to talk to us about how sites are chosen and laid out and how you do all that. We're going to meet some of the uh, some of the animals. We're going to see how the big top gets constructed and put up and taken down every day. But I, I think that really the most fascinating thing is how you keep an operation like this going. I mean, you perform 211 times a year, is that right? Yes, indeed. It's uh, We have maybe three, four days off during the 32 to 34 week season. How do you do it personally? How do you keep working like that? It's a rhythm and it's something that we love. We have a great passion for it. Anyone who's with the circus like this, if you don't like it, you wouldn't last very long at all. Mm -hmm. your, your specialty, the Kelly Miller Circus specialty, is the small rural areas and I guess you, you concentrate on the Midwest or where else do you go? We opened our tour in Oklahoma and we've gone into Texas and then we headed in kind of a northeasterly direction to New York State, uh, New Jersey, and then we headed west to Chicago and here we are now. Yeah. And uh, you'll, really, the end of this month will be pretty much the end of your season, I guess. Huh? It will. We'll be closing our tour in Oklahoma at the end of the month. Yeah. Your, your headquarters is in Oklahoma, and when your, your downtime is spent in Hugo, Oklahoma, and that's kind of a mecca for small circuses, isn't it? It is indeed. A local businessman in 1942 was interested in the circus and invited the Kelly Miller Circus, as it turned out to be, to winter there. Mm -hmm. And they did, and then it became a mecca for circuses, and now there are four circuses headquartered in this small town of about 5,500 people. I'll be doggone. And the kids that travel with this circus, the family members, uh, go to school here, which we will see in this program, and then they also go to school in Hugo in the off season. Indeed, yeah. Very it's interesting. interesting. Now, you also have a connection. This is this part's interesting, too. There, there hasn't been a circus connection with the Ringling name for a long time, but your circus does. How'd that happen? Well, in 1967, uh, the owners of the circus, uh, John Ringling North and Henry Ringling North, who were, whose uncles were the Ringling brothers, decided to sell the circus. They were retiring. Uh, and their son maintained an interest, John Ringling North II. Uh, and then he decided this year to get back in the business, so he bought the Kelly Miller Circus. Yeah. And so, uh, and so the Ringling name is again attached to, to this circus. It is indeed. Yeah, yes. Is he active? Is he active with the circus? Yes, he's a, he lives in Europe most of the time, but he's on his way over here right now, very much involved on the phone every couple of days, checking on things. He's going to do a little trapeze act later on for us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to no, happen. I don't think it? so. Well, listen, thank you so much. For, you've been very accommodating. During this program, we get to see the big top go up. We get to, you know, visit with the elephants. We get to, we get to see a lot of behind the scenes. And we couldn't do that without, without your help. So, Jim Royal, thanks very much. Thank you. Elephants helping. The forklift is out here. You're the ringmaster, right? Yes. And so you're the as such, you're not only the announcer, but you're also the director of all the acts. Yes, right? yes. And so you need to know what's going on every day. Maybe you can walk us through how this happens on a daily basis. This already about 15 minutes into the process, but the big tops in the process now have been raised. In it is, room. yes. This is a very traditional part of circus morning. We use animal power. We use... Uh, machinery and men to all breathe life into the, the big top. A few moments ago it was just uh, crumpled vinyl laying on the grass and as you can see within a half hour or so it's become a circus tent. This, uh, the, sadly in, in recent years the word circus has become to, to mean chaos but that's the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, circus morning is, is very organized, um, an orchestrated ballet almost of uh, the men and the machines working together. And, they, and we do it so often. We normally do this seven days a week in a different yeah. town each day. Everyone knows where they need to be. And 
there's very little confusion. Who's our elephant friend who's helping put the uh, put the tent up? This is Viola. Okay. Yes, she's one of our three Kelly Miller performing elephants. <laughs> and she is. And you couldn't do it without her, right? That's that's exactly right. These we actually uh, we we use a forklift, but the elephants respond more quickly and are actually uh, better to work with than uh -huh. machinery. And you do this every day. You do 211 shows a year. So when you're not, it's not that part of the year when you're closed, you're more than likely putting up and taking down the big top every day, aren't you? In the off season? No, in, in the on season. Oh, the on, Almost, definitely, It's, it's a yes, daily yes. situation. This, this, uh, this year's tour is 32 weeks. We started our tour in Oklahoma in mid-March and we're slowly working our way back there. We should close in late October. Uh, back in our hometown of Hugo, Oklahoma. Uh huh. Looks like now Viola is. Just, they're going to use Viola now to put that. Looks like they're going to put that last. Uh, that last. We call it work for the animals, but if you'll notice, Viola is just having a great time exploring the circus grounds, and yeah. she's going to go back and report to her friends what <laughs> what kind of grass is in the tent, so that she's they can all <laughs> enjoy it during the show. She seems perfectly content. Yes. And like you say, for her, this is probably not very hard work. She could pull a lot more than that. Oh, she? definitely. Okay, now they're going to tighten up that chain. It looks like... Oh, the kids get a kick out of that now. But the other interesting thing is you'll invite uh, elementary school kids from the community to, to witness this putting up the big top uh, wherever you are, won't you? We do. We feel this is a part of American history. For uh, for 200 years, circuses have been known for arriving in the early morning hours and turning a, a vacant lot or an empty field into a circus city for the day. Yeah. And it's uh, it's always been a tradition to invite the public out to come out and see the unloading of the the animals and, and the, the, their watering and feeding, the uh, positioning of all the equipment, okay. and of course the raising of the circus and, tent. And speaking of the raising, there goes Viola, and she's she's uh, putting another one of those standards in place, and you can see how high yes. the big top gets when it. And, and we're we're not just a business or a show, but we are a traveling community. You may have noticed earlier today the kids on their way to school that uh, school uh -huh. circus kids that uh, live and work and play with us right here on the on the road. We have a cafeteria that's preparing food for us for for lunch right now. We have a mechanic who's hard at work uh, working on lights and and checking oil for tomorrow morning's trip to the well, next town. Almost everybody has to wear more than one hat. I noticed a yes. lot of people, these guys that are putting up this tent, they're going to put it up and take it down every day, but they've got other jobs to do in the meantime. They do. Later later in the day, they'll become concession vendors. They'll become uh, prop men that assist the performers in the ring. We also have ushers. And uh, yes, everyone wears uh, many different hats. It's The circus is not a job that you clock into and out of each day. It's a way of life. And uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we are affected by the fact that we are living and working with uh, a tent circus. And there goes Viola putting up another one. Yes. She is something to watch, boy, I'll tell you. Well, John, thanks for the visit. This has been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Go Frisco, who have we here? This is Viola. She's our... Uh, 37-year-old, 10,000-pound female Asian elephant. She is, uh, she is a handful, isn't she? Yeah, she's one of the largest female Asian elephants in the United States. She's so she's gentle. She came right up to me, and I noticed she put her trunk, the end of her trunk, right in my hand like I was supposed to give her something. But it was like, it was like a puppy. It was like just a touch, just a little the, touch. Yeah, the inside of their trunk, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty soft. A lot of wetness in there, but... Wow. Uh, Elephants, that's how they that's how they shake hands. They smell you and see you smell like food or you smell like oh, Viola. anything she's a, interesting. She's awfully nice. Right you, now you're... she's in play mode, so Yeah, that's great. Now, and you're the trainer, right? The elephant trainer. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Elephant trainer, we got three elephants here. <clears throat> Viola, Libby, and Nina. Ages anywhere from forty five to thirty five. You've been eight to ten thousand pounds each elephant. You, so. You've been with this circus for two years, but your family's been in the circus for a long time. In fact, you're from Peoria, aren't you? Yeah, I've uh, 
third generation, and my son, he's a year and a half old now. He'll be the fourth generation. Is that hopefully. right? Yeah. Is he with the circus? Is he he's traveling here right now, Is actually. that right? Yeah. Wonderful. He travels with me, my wife, and my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, third generation started with my grandfather. My father's actually on Ringling Brothers right now, yeah. and then I'm here, and I have two other uncles that work elephants. And, it's a family business, That's just wonderful. like everybody else. Now, I know you need to put her up, so is it okay if we go with you? I, yeah. We'll stay Just out of your way, because right she is side. big. I know she's real big, and we'll stay out of your way. We want to go in there with you and maybe maybe get a look at some yeah, of the we'll other ones, Yeah, we'll stand in there with them. Viola okay. move up. We got uh, one trying to escape and get by the trees, but Viola, get over. Move up. <clears throat> Libby, back up. Come here, move up. Viola, move up. If you notice, 95% of working with elephants his voice command. Yeah, they, they really listen to you, don't they? Move up, yeah. It's it's all based on a relationship you build with them. Yeah. Viola, move up. <clears throat> Need to get over. Make some space here, girls. Everybody wants to be in the limelight, so they're not really yeah. giving her too much room. But Who's this one here? This is Libby. Libby. She is 35 years old, and this is Nina, our oldest. She is 47 years old. You know, it gives you an amazing feeling of smallness to be standing here among, among these giants. It, it's, it's, something, it's something special. I mean, not every day people can be around elephants. They always ask, like, how do you deal with a job like that? How do you move yeah. every day? But to people like us that have been in the circus business, it's something regular. It's, a, yeah. it's not a nine to five, but it's uh, something that we've grown up into. Yeah. And, you do it because you love it. You don't I, do it just for a job. I, I'm going to ask you a question. Libby. You probably get asked all the time. It's like this: how much, like how much water and how much food do these animals? Well, need? actually, we just gave these three, just gave these three a drink, and the two barrels over there are probably about 100 gallons each, and they'll drink almost both of them between the three of them. Uh -huh. Each elephant. Libby, back up. See, she wants to be in the limelight. Yeah, Everybody she wants to be in the camera, limelight. Doesn't she? Each elephant probably drinks about 55 to 75 gallons per serving, uh -huh. so they drink a lot of water. Yeah. And they get about an average day, if it's not that hot, they get five or six periods when we give drinks, mm -hmm. twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon, and yeah. twice at night. So yeah. your whole day when you work around animals should be that way anyways, but especially elephants, is, yeah. that's what it's based on. Yeah. You Tremendous work amount of food all, they all must elephant. go through. Oh, yeah. Too. Each elephant eats anywhere from three to five bales a hay a day. Yeah. Half a bag of grain each, My goodness. and lots of other things besides meat. And moving them around, uh, the trucks must be massive, and getting them on and off all the time? Well, each, each elephant's got their own individual spot. The trucks don't look as big. When you look inside, they get yeah. their own spots, and yeah. we, you limit the time they're in the truck. And if they are in the truck a long time, you, you pull over and you, get, you give them exercise, and then you start up. Yeah. Just, just like if you ride in a car, if you get a little stiff, you get up and start yeah. moving around, but that's that barely happens. We don't move them around that long. Now, th now, these animals are more than just to look at. They're showmen, aren't they? Oh, yeah. These three, all three perform. Two of them do rides. Look at that. This one here that can't get enough of the limelight, she is uh, just a performer. <laughs> Libby, back up. <laughs> Prima Donna, like them all. <laughs> but like I said before, each elephant, what they're doing with their trunks right now, they're 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 testing you out and sniffing you out like yeah. kind of a handshake, but mm -hmm. a wet handshake. Yeah. But uh, each one of them are performers, <laughs> and Viola, our large one, wow. <clears throat> the 10,000-pound female, she'll pull the tent up. She's the star of the morning mm -hmm. festivities. Yeah. But uh, right now, I mean, we just finished setting up and just gave them water, mm -hmm. get them fed down, <clears throat> get all their fans hooked up, and probably give them a little bath yeah. before their bath. Yeah. But. Uh, it's all about the animals, that's why we're here. And it's an all day process, but that's all our day life. every day. Oh yeah. No no life. days off with elephants, but that's why we're here, to be around them and not all it's not only just to work with them, it's it like right now it's an educational thing. People mm -hmm. forget about that too, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. You know what <clears throat> Libby back up. It's a relationship you gotta build. An animal that's eight to ten thousand pounds. If you don't build a relationship with them, it's kind of like a dog. It's not going to listen to you if you don't build a relationship with them. You just can't come in and work them. A lot of people don't see the behind the scenes you do with them, but that's what we're doing right now. Well, Chris Beckett, you know, the Kelly Miller Circus is on the move every day. Uh, and, and, and every day you got to travel and find another place. And I was interested to learn that they have what's called a 24-hour man. They couldn't set up in a different location every day unless they had an advanced man that went out 
and, and, and actually looked at the locations and marked everything out. So when they get here, they know, they know what to do. And you're holding in your hand a bunch of flags which is what you use to mark everything out. These are the layout flags. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell me, what you, tell me what your day is like. I'm up at 5.30 in the morning, uh, have my coffee, get my parrot his breakfast. I have a parrot that travels with me. Mm -hmm. uh, like anybody else, you know, you shave, you brush your teeth. Sure. Now, at about 7, the fleet starts to arrive. First gentleman on the lot is the lot superintendent. We go over the way the show is laid out, where the big top is, the animal department, uh, the concessions, and uh -huh. which semis we want to place where, mm -hmm. uh, what the weather is going to be, uh, influences truck placement. Because um, we can change the trucks around on this show where a lot of people, the other shows can't. Yeah. The tent's custom made for us. Mm -hmm. I can take the bandwagon out anywhere, I can take the midway out anywhere that I need to on this show to make it work. Yeah. Every, every site you go to, now we're in Chatham Community Park right now, and it's kind of a nice big location, but you might go to some places that are pretty tight. What, uh, what, what are your... How, how small can you go? I don't like to get any smaller than 225 on a width, but then I need an additional 75 on length to get all the equipment in. Yeah, and we're talking feet now. Feet, yeah. So, Ideally 300 by 300. But I have actually got down to about mm, 165 one time. Wow. And uh, it's, 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 it makes it rough because you can't get by. It's, you have to uh, adjust all your trucks. Yeah. And if you can't get the trucks on, you're going, I hope there's no wind. Yeah. We can take an 80 mile an hour wind with trucks all the way around. Well, let's let's take a look. Let's look, let's look truck okay. by truck. What's this truck behind you here? Right. That's the uh, the cookhouse. That's the cookhouse. Okay. okay. And it also has, carries a small generator that runs that. Uh, so where our people eat. Uh huh. And from nine to eleven, that's the schoolhouse. It's off limits. So you have fam your family, your performing families, mm -hmm. and the family employees. They bring their kids, kids. and you and you educate them. And here. we have yes, we have two teachers in there. That's fantastic. So, Two teachers. Yeah. So Monday through yeah. Friday, nine to eleven. That's that's off limits. Yeah. Yeah. On the back side's a pole truck. This over here. Okay. Yeah. That weighs about sixty thousand pounds. It carries all the main poles for the tent, uh, our bobcat, and the porta pots. Uh huh. Okay. And you notice that the tent is tied to that. That adds to our structural integrity, just like the cookhouse is tied to it. Okay. All right. You have four main center poles. Uh huh. There are cables come down, which are called jiggers which secure those poles and tie to these trucks. And we're gonna see this big top come up, so uh, so that's, we'll, we'll see how that works. Yeah. Take, keep me going me around the circle here. All right, uh, first rig, this is all back, backyard, we call backyard performers. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the Chinese uh, acrobats and contortionists, and if you go over, you know, it's a shop truck parked back behind it. Yeah. This is a tow vehicle, which we use to tie to, to help secure the tent. Yeah. Uh, the wheel, the perch pole people, or over there, and you're going to come around. That's the bandwagon, the 1070 truck. Uh, okay. The drummer sits in there. That comes under the tent when it's up. All the lighting and stuff is carried into that vehicle. Okay. Uh, you go around the school teachers on that side, and then we'll have the dog act. Uh, all your performers are over there. Then this truck here is our main generating plant. And this is this big Kelly Miller Circus yes. truck. That's your generator. Huh? Yeah, and there's okay. also performers, or uh, excuse me, uh, workers have quarters in there also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that runs the main show. Uh -huh. The pole truck has a small generator on it. Should this one go down, or if the weather's nice, we'll, we'll adjust the trucks and run it. And as you come around, you can kind of catch the side of the horse truck there. Uh -huh. And then you have your, your Marque. Yeah. And we drive 120 stakes, 40 wow. inches deep, steel. If it's wet, muddy, you're going to use wood stakes because they yeah. hold better. All the action will take place under the big top. Yes. But all this other is support vehicles to make sure that you can get the big what it, what goes on under the big top there on time, working everybody, working as it. How long does it take in the day to set one of these up? You start at like what six in the morning? Oh and no, they, and you, no. They roll in at seven. They roll in at seven. By mm, seven forty-five, eight at the latest. It's all parked. Yeah. They're driving stakes. If you've done your job right. Yes, it's all, yes, yes, yes. They're hand lacing canvas. Yeah. Uh, we use a hydraulic driver to drive the stakes yeah. for the big top. They still drive them by hand for the animal department, the pony ride, and the cookhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. The fleet does follow the convoy markers to get here. Yeah. Now, see if the markers. And that's another thing you do. Yes. The convoy if, markers. If the markers are down, then we may lose them, or if they're not paying attention, yeah. they also get a route slip. Okay. Uh, you're going to make a ride on I-55. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Unless your ramp is the other direction, but that's where the arrows right. go. Gotcha. 
So you have two down, say one to the right. That's your first warning for a turn. Mm -hmm. A little further up, you have uh, one down, two to the right, three at the actual turn. You're a logistics master. Can yeah. you imagine a lost circus? That's a nightmare, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is. And uh, occasionally you'll you'll lose one in the city for yeah. and two hours. You're worrying. Yeah. And then they get one arrow up once they make the turn to know that they've they've went the right way. Yeah. They also get them for rough railroad crossings. One up, one down means slow up a little bit. Yeah. Two down, a lot more. Three, you want to crawl across the crossing. Yeah. Okay. The idea is there so we're not jostling, throwing the animals around in the semis. You know. right. uh, downgrades in the mountains, same deal. One up, multiple down, depending on the severity of the grade, the gear you need to be in. Uh, we Chris, it, it looks like, I mean, it looks like you've done your job well because everything is settled and it looks like everything's going up without a, without a hitch. So thanks for, thanks for joining us. Okay. And then you, you're on the road to, to the next stop. Here at about 9.30. <laughs> Thank right. you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Didi Perez, when you work for the circus, you got to wear a lot of hats, don't you? Absolutely. You're the you're the office manager, right? But you've also been a teacher, exactly. And it's interesting here. People probably would never never imagine that when you have a circus on the road, you've got families and children, and those kids have to be taught, right? Right. So you've got an education system here for we the do. kids of the circus performers and employees. We do, and we're actually very fortunate because a lot of shows don't provide teachers mm -hmm. for the schools. They do it on their own. The, the families have to do it on their own. But we have here, we're lucky, we're ha we have two people who are helping our, our kids stay right where they should be. Uh -huh. So we're lucky about yeah. with that. And, and we're in a tent that also doubles as the... Uh, we this call it cookhouse. The cookhouse. Yes, okay, so that's but this our, it's like our gets, dining hall. Everybody gets yeah, fed Yeah, we have here. somebody who cooks for us also, mm -hmm. cooks all our meals for us. Yeah. Um, you know, and we get two meals a day, plus in the morning donuts and coffee. So. Mm -hmm. So, but before lunch, this is this is the this school. This is school, and everybody and knows that. If you notice, no employees are wandering in right? and out. This is exactly right. they know the rules. The kids nine need to, be to eleven is school. Okay, and so. what you've done is you've set this up in conjunction with the Hugo, Oklahoma school district. Exactly. Because when these kids are not in the cir with the circus, they'll be in the Hugo schools. Exactly, and what happens is the Hugo school helps us um, with with materials, and tells us where they need to be. So when we get back, they're exactly where they, they should be. And most of them, actually, when they'll go back, will probably be at the top of their class or honor roll students. Is that so, right? Yeah, we're pretty proud of that. I'll bet you are. Well, thanks for the visit. Thank you. Well, Tavana Brown, you have an interesting past because you've been with this circus for, what, 11 years? or? Well, I was here from uh, 89 to 93, so for five years. Then I went to other circuses, uh, shrine circuses, other tented circuses. This is my fourth year back here now. I see. You used to be a performer. Yes. You were what they call an aerialist. Yes. And people that don't know what that is, would you describe what an aerialist does? Well, an aerialist can do all kinds of different acts above the ground. I actually did a single trapeze act, and it's not like the flying trapeze where they fly and do somersaults and let go. It's a, just a trapeze. I did swing. I didn't do any flying and letting mm -hmm. go, but it, I performed by myself. Yeah. Well, Jim Royal tells us that you were one of the best, though. Well, I'd like to think so. <laughs> and, and, well, a lot of people were interested. Like you said, you, you had uh, media companies that wanted to would, that film you and, right. and, and et cetera. So you, you had a reputation. Yeah. But you a decided, <laughs> you, got, you got to the point in life where you didn't want to do that anymore, right. but you decided to stay with the circus. Right. Why? Well, it's uh, the way I was born and raised. And I always used to say that when I was a little girl, I just woke up one day and I was in the circus. I thought everybody was in the circus. I thought everybody's <laughs> parents dressed up. I didn't realize that other kids didn't travel to different states and different cities. And uh, one lady told me, she said, well, I woke up and I was on a farm. So it's what the way you were raised is what's yeah. normal and natural for you. Yeah. So this is where I feel is my home, all my friends, my family, everybody's here. And this is what I've done my whole life. So yeah. I've just moved into a different aspect of the circus. I don't perform anymore, yeah. but I'm still with it and for yeah. it. Do you miss it, the performance? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I I wish I could go in and show you what I used to could do yeah. because I was very proud of what I did and I enjoyed it immensely. It's mm -hmm. a it's an amazing feeling to be 30 feet above the ground in front of hundreds of people, sometimes thousands of people, and they're all watching you mm -hmm. do tricks. And then, of course, in anybody's job, you come down and you 
take a style and everybody claps. <laughs> so you're, you that get never instant happens. gratification. That never happens for the rest of us. Right. That's right. So Did now you? I do my job. I don't get the applause, but you know, yeah. that it's, it's, very, uh, it's very uplifting and it's a, a great feeling. Yeah. Did you ever get seriously injured? Nope, never did. 28 years I performed my act and I never fell, I never got hurt. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. Well, my parents uh, emphasized uh, a lot of, we practiced for, I practiced for four hours a day f or for two years to do the act that I did. And my father always emphasized checking uh, the rigging daily, was, everything was checked and a lot of practice to make sure that you mm -hmm. could do it correctly. Mm -hmm. And your husband is still with the circus, yep. so you tour together yep. and you get to travel together and you do your jobs yep. together. We work together, we travel together, we're always together. So yeah. a lot of people find that hard to do, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I enjoy uh, that my child is right here on the grounds going to school and uh, we all have lunch together and then we work together and all during the day. We're, I, it would be difficult for me to go to one office this way and he go to an office yeah. that way and we wouldn't see each other till five o'clock. We're not used to that. We just weren't raised that way, yeah. so, but most people yeah. are. <laughs> well, as you can see, Jill is rewarding Viola for her good work in putting up the big top with her monthly pedicure. The Kelly Miller Circus uh, leaves Chatham here. After today, they're on their way to Benelde, Illinois, and then to Troy, Illinois, to their wintering grounds in Hugo at the end of the month. With another Illinois story in Chatham, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. For a copy of the program you've just seen, send $19.95 for VHS or $24.95 for DVD to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and the date the program aired. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.